If you're watching this in real time, we're all practicing social distancing because of a little something called coronavirus. But if you're watching this years later, enjoy the fun workout. In case you don't have access to any equipment, I took five objects you'll most likely have access to at home and created a workout around them. With each object, you'll get three exercises. We're going to treat each object's exercises as a tri-set. So you'll do them one after the other with no rest, then you'll rest, then you'll do it again. On the couch, we're doing decline push-ups, Bulgarian split squats, and elevated bridges. For decline push-ups, simply take your shoes off, then place your feet on the edge of your couch. The higher the couch, the harder this will be. These are a great way to add some stability training into a strength exercise, and it will target more of your upper chest. So ladies, that's important for the ladies. Make sure your pelvis stays neutral to keep the pressure off your low back and your core engaged. I recommend taking your shoes off for this exercise too, unless you want to get coronavirus on your couch. Too soon? Anyway, these bridges obviously work your glutes, but I like the elevation because shocker, stabilization. It's also more difficult with the elevation of the legs because you never get that recovery by resting your booty on the floor in between each rep. So glutes are engaged for a longer period of time, increasing your overall time under tension. I purposely put these squats after the bridges to really ensure the glutes are awake. A lot of people cannot fire their glutes because we're super quad dominant as a society. So strengthening your backside is going to help you a lot with everyday aches and pains. I like these because, again, it adds a level of stabilization to a strength exercise. This is an important aspect of training because it helps you learn how to use your core to stabilize through daily movement. Be sure to keep the front knee back in line with your ankle and the weight in the heel to get better glute activation and less pressure around the knee. With our book, we're doing leg presses, uneven push-ups, and leg extensions. I have no clue what the real name for this exercise is, but I call it a leg press because you press into your leg. I don't know. You can do this without a book, but I like having something to really press against. This one looks easy, but it will light up your core. I like putting this exercise early in a workout because it's a great way to activate the abdominals and get them prepped to stabilize you for the rest of your workout. Be sure to keep your knee in line with your hip and low back pinned down to the mat the entire time. If that knee is coming in toward your chest, you're going to activate the hip flexor instead of the core. I know, I know, more push-ups. Let me tell you something right now. Push-ups will transform your upper body. Once I added push-ups into my normal routine, I was gifted the arms that I have now. No, like seriously, do push-ups. Uneven push-ups will recruit your core a bit more because of the instability, but they also help increase your range of motion. I was getting pretty tired, so please don't judge my range of motion here. Okay, thanks, bye. Here's another exercise that I don't know the name of. I swear I'm a professional. There's actually an exercise I teach at work called scrambled eggs, and I wanted to figure out how to do it without the machine because it is the best oblique exercise out there. Hands down. Fight me. I like kneeling on the block to mimic the instability of the carriage moving, and then keep your hips neutral the entire time as the leg drops toward the floor. If you're sitting really deep into that supporting leg, the hip flexor will do all the work and you won't be able to tap into your obliques. With my favorite pillow in the entire world, we're doing leg lowers, single leg bridges, and rotational throws. First of all, if you've never seen The Office, I apologize for my pillow and if it offends you. Now, if you're tempted to put crunches into your workout, I want you to think again, because we're typically so hunched over as a society due to nine to five desk jobs, I prefer to work the abdominals by lengthening them rather than crunching them in together. You can totally do this exercise without the pillow, but I like to add it for some inner thigh activation and make it a little bit more of a compound movement. Make sure your low back is pinned to the mat the entire time and just shorten the range of motion to take it down a notch. More bridges, baby! Taking these to single leg will not only make it exponentially harder for your glutes, but you're also adding some stability. Are you seeing a theme? 
Now just like the leg lowers, the pillow is totally optional, but I like adding it for that inner thigh activation and to make sure the knees aren't bowing out to the sides, which would recruit more inner thigh and we want all glute. Okay, this one is a stretch. I love this exercise, but a pillow is just, it, it's a stretch. I would typically do this with a medicine ball. It's a great rotational oblique exercise, and I will say a lot of people don't know how to twist from the mid-back or thoracic spine, so this is a great safe way to teach that. Make sure your hips stay in one position or else that core won't fire at all. With this random bottle of vodka, we're doing a dead bug chest fly, sit back shoulder press, and lateral raise split squat. I can't even tell you why I purchased this except for the fear of the apocalypse and never having tried this bougie kettle one that was on sale. So please don't judge me for my taste in alcohol. You can also do this with a sensible full water bottle. I just wanted to get your attention. Anyway, all three of these exercises are examples of unilateral training, which is really important to add into your routine because it exposes imbalances on each side of the body, giving you a chance to really even it out. I've said this many times before, but the dead bug is my favorite abdominal exercise. It's not only effective as hell, but there are so many creative variations you can do. Right here, I'm doing an alternating arm dead bug chest fly. As the weight, or vodka, extends away from your body, it changes your center of gravity causing core engagement to keep your hips and low back down on the floor. Sit backs are great for teaching a proper hip hinge. By adding the single side shoulder press, you're severely changing your center of gravity in front of you and on one side. You can typically go a little heavier with this one since it's a press instead of a raise, but be sure to keep your shoulders and pelvis neutral so you're out of the upper traps and the low back. Another split squat variation, but this time we're working on stability by keeping the lateral raise on one side of the body at a time. It's the same concept. Your center of gravity is changing to one side, so your core needs to compensate for it. This is also a great compound movement to work your shoulder, core, and legs all at the same time. Now, just like the Bulgarian split squat, you'll wanna keep your joints stacked, knee over ankle, ankle over knee. It'll load the correct muscles and keep your joints nice and safe. the ottoman or sturdy chair of your choice, we're doing box squats, tricep dips, and step ups. I love box squats because it teaches you how to get out of the hole or get up safely from a seated position. This is a super functional movement. Oh my God, I can't believe it took me this long to say the word functional because it mimics something we do every single day. Stand up. Box squats with no weight, no bands, no nothing. It's a great way to teach a proper hip hinge and get up safely. Make sure that you're working with control in both directions and not just plopping down or jumping up. Tricep dips will work your triceps. They're not my favorite tricep exercise, but they do add that aspect of stability. Make sure when performing these, your booty is only moving because your elbows are bending. As far as advancement goes, legs bent will be level one, legs straight will be level two, and elevated legs will be level three. I'm doing these step ups with a hold at the top to work stabilization, shocking, of the ankle and core. You could totally speed these up and make it more of a power exercise as well, but I think the everyday person will find more benefits from slowing down and controlling the movement. Drive through the heel to get the most glute activation possible, and if you want to end this workout with a heart rate really, really elevated, you can do a second set of these as fast as possible, making it more of knee drives. Thanks for hanging out for my workout. Make sure after you're done, you cool down and stretch, stay safe from the coronavirus, and subscribe so you don't miss out.